Welcome back, creeps. Hello, everyone. I would like to start off this episode. episode <laughs> yes. Um, by apologizing for the delay and for the confusion. I, we decided the other day we were going to rename our listener stories Titillating Tales of True Terror. You're welcome. Yes, thank you, Dulce. <laughs> it was a joint effort. To be yeah, fair. it was. But we also were like leaving it till the last minute to record, and then we got home and found that we actually had a burst pipe. Yeah. And so we couldn't record that day. And then the next day, I was like, well, I've got no episode to record, so I better just rename all these episodes to keep me busy for an hour or whatever. And then accidentally reposted the Christmas titillating tales of true terror episode. So I'm sure people were like, what the fuck are these assholes doing? Like, we've heard this one. Yeah. Like, when you tell the same joke over and over again, it's like, we've heard this one. Yeah. So, um, apologies. So, on this week's episode of Titillating Tales of Terror, or this month's, rather, we're going to be telling you some titillating tales of terror. Um, true terror. Of true terror, yeah. I want to ask. I want to wash my butt and eat shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's do this. So I can wash my butt and eat shrimp. I just got off work, so I'm a little mucky. Manky. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you shit yourself. <laughs> I'm a little manky. <laughs> um, I need I'm, what other words are there? I'm a little ripe. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's gross. You make me feel ill. <laughs> Okay, so let's get straight into it. I'm stewing. <laughs> anyway. Is it weird that I really like grossing people out? <laughs> grossing me out. <laughs> no, I do that to my mom too. I'll just be like, Mom, I'm going to go take a big shit. And she's just like, ooh. She's like, eres una marrana, which means you're such a pig. <laughs> <laughs> that's nasty okay so our first story comes from victoria and they have a very cool instagram page called miss witch readings miss witch dot readings um which with two haters but i'm sure it'll come up for you and how we got to know victoria was through their sister danica who we have shouted out before because she's such a big follower of the fa- of the show and we really appreciate her but if you go on to miss witch readings as well as having tarot readings and astrology business on there they actually had a they went live i guess like about a month ago right yeah and spoke for like an hour just on all the haunted happenings um that's going on in their apartment and stuff like that so we watched that and then we reached out and now we're all friends it was great and so They shared another story with us. And I'm about to read it. So make sure you go and check out their Instagram page. So I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay, Dulce. All right. Okay. So here's one that I thought of and I decided to share with you guys. I have a grandpa that died when I was a teenager and I'm not super close to that family anymore. So I don't go to that house anymore. But there was a time when I was really close to one of my cousins. It's my dad's side of the family, and he has 12 brothers and sisters, so I have many, many cousins. But there was one day where I went over there specifically to hang out with this one cousin who was visiting from out of town. And they have this back room, kind of like a den, where we were. And we assumed our sisters were in a room within that den. So there's a den with a bathroom in it and a bedroom in it. A very small bedroom, but it's a nice, cozy space. It's nice to have people stay back there because it's like your own space. So we were hanging out in the den area and the bedroom door was closed. We thought our sisters were both in there, but we were just kind of chatting and being crazy. You know, we were like maybe 14 or 15 years old and we heard a knock coming from the other side of the door. And so my cousin, being a little braver than I was at the time, she went up to the door and she hit it like she pounded on it. She was like, we know you're in there, stop being assholes. And we never got a response. A few minutes later, we heard another one. Boom, on the door. So this time she was pissed and she got up and opened the door. 
she was just gonna barge in on them and she kind of just started freaking out and i was like what what's wrong and she told me nobody was in there there was nobody in the closet nobody under the bed the window screen couldn't even come off if someone had wanted to play a prank on us so we kind of sat down on the futon that was back in the den and we just kind of thought for a second and we were like we both heard that twice not just once and we were both here and personally i just feel like shared experiences are just scarier because you know that you were both there and you both witnessed it so but then we're sitting on the futon and the, and there comes a tap from the bottom like somebody's under there like hitting on the metal with their nails and we both freaked out and picked up our feet and we just kind of stared at the door for a second and boom there was a third pound on the door there was a back door that led to the backyard and we just booked it out of there because conveniently the door to the kitchen was locked from the outside that lock was there for its own reasons it's nothing that scary but we were stuck you know so we ran through the back door and went out to the front yard where everyone was barbecuing and drinking and whatnot. And we were freaking out, so our parents came up to us asking us what was wrong. And we were both automatically blaming our sisters, like, we don't know how they did it, but they scared us, blah, blah, blah. A few years after that, I told my dad about it. I was on the phone to my cousin and I came up to him and I asked him if he remembered. And he got, like, white as a sheet. And he was like, why have you never told me about this before? And I was like... I told mom, she came up to me when it happened and so did my auntie Tisha, who was his sister. And I told them, and I told them, so I assumed you knew. And he was like, did I ever tell you that my grandpa died in that room? And I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) No, you didn't. That would have been really useful information to have. And there's my cousin freaking out on the other line because she can hear him say, say all this to us. So evidently, not only did his grandpa die back there, but his grandpa was also kind of an asshole, and he liked to play pranks on all of them when they were younger, and he was mean to them, like he just got a kick out of it. That was the first experience that I ever had in there that ended up being revealed to me as something that was a bit bigger than it was when I actually experienced it. Yeah, it was scary when we experienced it, but that was only the first time. And again, I don't speak to my dad, and I have not been to my grandparents' house in years, So I haven't had anything there since this next one, which was after my grandpa died, as in the storyteller's grandpa. Which I want to say was not too long after that first experience, maybe a few years. I was in high school. My grandma decided to go to one of my cousin's weddings and we all decided to stay and watch the house for her because she had a dog at the time and he was old and blind. So we stayed there and took care of him. But we also took our dog And I remember it so vividly. It was pouring rain that night and there was a leak in the ceiling. So we had a bowl collecting the water and I woke up to the dripping, dripping, dripping. Maybe 30 seconds to a minute later, I felt stuck. And I think this was the first time I thought I experienced sleep paralysis. And I started to kind of freak out a little bit. But about 30 seconds to a minute after I woke up, an alarm started going off. Now me and my sister were sleeping on the futon in the den and my dad and mom were sleeping in the bedroom of the den. So I was like, my mom's a really light sleeper. She'll wake up. She'll tell my dad to get up and investigate. And then I waited and I waited and nobody woke up. And I was just stuck there. I couldn't move. I couldn't get up to wake them. I couldn't say anything to wake them. I was just stuck. Shortly after that, my dog got up And walked into the rest of the house because, like I said, this is in the way back of the house. He walked into the dining room and through the living room and it took me a second to actually do it. But I felt something pull me. There was a force there. I did not get up on my own. I felt something pull me out of that bed. My chest went up first and that's how I knew it was not me. So I got up and I walked over to the room and I woke up my parents. And as soon as my mom opened her eyes, the alarm turned off and I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? And so I just kind of tell them and hope that they believe me. But I had already had that one experience in there and my dad already knew that my great grandpa died back there. So I told them, I don't know if there's some kind of security system here or what, but I heard an alarm go off and it kind of freaked me out 
and it turned off as soon as you guys woke up. So everybody got up and we all started going through the house and we just didn't find anything. We didn't find a source and my dad was like, Grandma doesn't even have a security system. That's part of the reason why we stay here when she's gone. And so my mom was like, let's just come out here in the morning and investigate again. She was the first one up. She was always the first one up. But I went out there the next morning and I asked her, did she find anything that could have set off an alarm? And she said, yeah, I found out what it was, actually. And she picks up this green plastic alarm clock that's been there for probably as long as I have, maybe even longer, by the front door on its shelf. And she says, it's an alarm clock. And it went off in the middle of the night. And I was like, why would grandma set it to go off at four something? And she said... I don't know, we'll talk to your dad about it when he wakes up. My dad wakes up a little while later, and my mom tells him that it was set for this time, somewhere between 4.20 and 4.30 a.m., and he tells my mom that that was the exact minute that my grandpa passed away. My grandpa passed away the day before my sister's birthday in 2010, and my dad got a phone call in the middle of the night, and we all woke up, so I remember when he left, And I remember staying up and waiting to hear the news that my grandpa passed away. So I know that that was the time, but I needed a huge reminder, and that was it. Of course, I'm not going to remember the exact time my grandpa passed away, but my dad did because it was his dad. I'm not the only one who had an experience there after he passed away. My cousins did as well. One of my younger cousins, he had nightmares there. It was strange to hear that from my aunt after my mom told her about my experience and then my aunt told her that her son had been waking up whenever they stayed there. He wakes up sweating and freaking out as if it was real and while this was strange what makes it even more strange was that this cousin was probably the closest to my grandpa. He adored him, he looked up to him and ever since he was a kid he just always wanted to be there with my grandparents. So while it is weird to me that I had this experience It's also weird that somebody else had something happen to them. But what stands out to me so much is how much more malicious my cousin's experience was compared to mine. When it happened to me, I woke up, I was scared, but I was scared because I felt stuck. I wasn't scared because it felt like there was something scary there. It didn't feel dark, it didn't feel heavy, and I can usually pick up on those things pretty easily. So I don't know, it's just strange to me that that his experience was different to mine. I haven't spoken to him about it because from what I can understand, it was kind of traumatic because he was so close to him. I probably wouldn't want to think about it either. So I really have never made him talk about it or think about it at all, but I know that it happened. So yeah, there's that room. Oh fuck. (laughs) Thanks Victoria. (laughs) Yeah, Um, thank you. Also I have written under here, and I'm not laughing at your story, but every time I was trying to type an alarm clock, yeah, I'm I'm really bad at typing, evidently. But I kept typing anal arm clock, <laughs> <laughs> so I just nice. wrote anal arm clock down at the bottom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, fuck that. I recently had sleep paralysis and scared the shit out of Dulce with it. When was that? Like a few weeks back, and I'm actually going to. Uh, talk about it soon probably on here because when i was on jim harold's show i was talking about these freaky ass dreams that i have had like over the years yeah and leading up to his show i had more freaky ass dreams Uh. and then right after i had that nightmare where i literally those they thought i was having a seizure when was this i can't remember a few weeks back it was like a saturday morning i was all like shaking and and then I woke up and I was like, there's a little girl at the end of the bed. And he was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I remember. <laughs> but I was still so sleepy that and I, I knew that was like being too blunt to say to you. But I was just like, I couldn't think of anything else to say. <laughs> so anyway, Victoria, I completely understand how fucking horrible. Those. Knowing me, I probably was like, instead of like an, oh, God, I'm scared. I'm just like, oh, God, this yeah that, that's literally how it was it was just an unimpressed oh god <laughs> remember that time you walked into the room and i was sleeping by myself <laughs> i didn't hear you come in 
<laughs> he scared the shit out of me. I turned around and I was like, what the fuck? When yeah. did you get here? <laughs> To be fair, I was just standing over you. I was trying to get the melatonin off the thing. But I yeah. thought it was pork chop, and I was like, "Wait a minute, pork chop's not a bad little girl." <laughs> She's also not a five foot something man. I'm not very big, ladies and gentlemen. Well, like I heard the pills, and I was like, "Cause I, that's something oh, Max it was just her would pill." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you know that's something Max would fucking do is fuck with pills. Yeah, yeah, of course, because he's a dick. He is. Um, but yeah, no, Victoria, that's fucking nuts. And obviously, I don't know what the situation is there, whether you're going to go back to that house or not. But if you do ever go back to that house, please let us know if you have any more experiences there. And yeah, guys, do not forget to go check out her page, Miss Witch Readings. Okay, tell us a story, Dulce. Okay. All right, here we go. I don't know who wrote this. So if you wrote this, reach out to us. Because I took a screenshot and I didn't screenshot the part of like the like who wrote it. So that's kind of shitty. Off to a good start. Okay. I know. <laughs> but I'm going to read it. Um, I'm 48 years old. When I was younger, nine or 10, I had this bedroom set that my parents bought from the Salvation Army. We didn't have a lot of money growing up. Every night, I'd have the same reoccurring nightmare about these distorted humanoid-looking creatures, maybe ghosts, trying to get out of the mirror that was attached to the dresser to get to me. They'd pound on the mirror. Their facial features were distorted, like if you were to look at someone through distorted glass. One morning, I woke up after having the dream and sat up in my bed, dangling my feet over the edge of the bed, and I looked at the mirror. I stood up because I needed to get out of my PJs and get some pancakes. I could smell them cooking. I think that's probably what woke me up, to be honest. (laughs) That sounds pretty good to me. (laughs) It just took a left turn because he was talking about like (laughs) humanoid demons in the mirror. He's like, so I had to get out of my PJs and get pancakes. (laughs) PJs and pancakes. Yay. (laughs) When I stood up, the mirror basically unhinged itself from the slots that kept it in place. The mirror came inches from my head. The sharp corner part would have severely hurt me if I was hit. The mirror shattered ah, the mirror shattered all over the place. My mother rushed in from the kitchen to see what all of the commotion was, and I told her what happened. She knew about the dreams too. Even though that memory is pretty fresh, what really traumatized me is that after that happened, my bed started to jump up and down with me in it. Oh no. After a while, my parents finally got the hint and got rid of the furniture. That's horrible. <laughs> my dad actually got um, got me a bed from somewhere. Sorry, my chair keeps squeaking. Fucking Amazon Basics. <laughs> it's because um, of the weight. Like I've noticed that. Oh. No, I'm <laughs> the chairs at my work do that. <laughs> like they, I get them, and they don't squeak. But then after a while, they start to squeak. Yeah. Well, anyway, my dad bought me a, he didn't buy me a bed. He acquired a bed from somewhere one time, like probably from like some job that was getting rid of a fairly new bed. And I ended up with it. And I was so afraid that the bed was going to be haunted that I slept on the floor floor for like two or three weeks. Whoa. Yeah. That sounds uncomfortable. I wouldn't sleep on a floor. It was okay. I didn't mind it, honestly. But thinking back on it now it's another one of those things where i'm like my dad must have been so pissed <laughs> like you just brought me home this lovely new bed and i sleep on the floor <laughs> ungrateful swine okay so this one is from reddit user sudden underscore blacksmith underscore 41 i know everybody says this but i don't believe in ghosts not in the traditional sense at least But my house does weird stuff. When we moved in 2015, the house was owned by a family who had who had an old school landline, as in they had a classic dial up phone with the numbers that you had to spin around to make the call. My wife and I kept it because we thought it was cool, even though it took about 20 minutes to get a telephone number right. But this phone did weird shit. First, my wife rang me at home one day and became very suspicious because she could hear a woman's voice. 
I said that it was probably crossed wires, no biggie. She said it sounded like a woman singing on the other end. I laughed that she thought I had the time or energy to have an affair and thought nothing of it. Fast forward, my mother-in-law rings. I have a two-year-old daughter at this point. I'm talking to my mother-in-law about something, probably repairs on the house. It was and still is a fixer-upper. When she starts laughing and saying that she loves my daughter's singing. My daughter, who is not singing. So I'm like, well, crossed wires, it's fine. This happens 10 or 20 more times. I actually hear it about five times when using the phone and it sounds like a girl or woman singing. Each time the sound was identical. Like a kind of lilting tra-la-la song coming from a great distance. Or a tra-la-la song. (laughs) I still just think, yeah, okay, interference from somewhere. Anyway, we unplug the phone and get a newer one. The sound stop immediately. Weird, but whatever. Next thing, I'm about to fall asleep one night when my wife starts screaming that she's seen something downstairs. I run down and she's genuinely terrified. Apparently she saw a white dress moving between the hall moving between the hall doorways as if somebody was running and the dress was billowing out behind them. This happens again about a week later. But this time my wife is even more terrified because she doesn't just see a dress. She sees a profile of a woman above it that she can accurately describe, like anatomically. So I'm still skeptical. My wife works long hours as a teacher and this could be explained by tiredness and the brain conjuring up weird shit for fun as the brain tends to do. I'm just going to interrupt here. I've worked some long ass shifts and been very tired in my time. Sometimes I'm just tired of being awake. My brain has never conjured up stuff like that. And if you told me you were seeing shit, I would believe you. <laughs> just saying. Okay. Back now into you, the story. Now I'm wondering if I ever told you that. Anyway, back to the story. One day, my daughter starts screaming from the bathroom upstairs. I run up and she is crying. She says a person was watching her from the hall, peeking out of mom and daddy's room. She is inconsolable. And keep saying that there's somebody in the house. So by now I think, okay, well, these types of things have happened for four more years on and off. They tend to go in cycles, occurring for a few weeks and then not occurring for months at a time. I will often forget that my house is quote unquote haunted. Then suddenly something weird will happen one day and I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, the ghost. Anticipating a question... I have indeed seen something weird. I used to sleep badly due to anxiety and panic attacks. I have never experienced hallucinations or anything due to these, but I realized they could make me susceptible to sensory delusions. I myself believe that what I saw was probably the result of my anxiety compounded with sleeplessness. However, one night I was heading to bed around 2am. I glanced up the stairs as I was putting the dog in the kitchen. Dog always chills with me downstairs. And I saw, for a moment, a flash of white passing up the stairs, like a dress. I even swear I saw the hem of the dress unfurling behind it. I have seen this at least four times in five years of living at the house, at very unexpected times. As in, times I had forgotten about the haunted nature of the house. I'll be doing my thing, and suddenly, boom. There's the white thing, whatever it is, moving somewhere in the house. My wife has also experienced it many times. My son, now five, has also always experienced serious difficulties sleeping in his bedroom due to what he used to call the twirly woos in his room. In parentheses, Google it, a weird British kids show and fuck seeing that in the middle of the night. Okay, we're going to have to Google that. Now he is more vocal. He simply says he doesn't like his room because he thinks people are there. Whoa. So... My house, not particularly scary, but an example of how you can live in a strange little house without believing in ghosts and carry on with your life, even if your world might be genuinely haunted as shit. Well, sudden blacksmith 41. I mean, look, I'm, you know how skeptical I tend to be when weird shit happens. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. For the most part. But at the same time, if I was actually seeing shit Mm. and we were seeing the same shit, 
and if we had a kid and it was saying shit. Yeah. I still feel like you try to explain it away somehow. Maybe for the kid's sake. Yeah. But deep down, I'd be freaking out. I was just thinking. Oh. I th- <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> you just stopped mid-podcast there. Like it was... <laughs> Sorry, I was just really deep in thought. Yeah, I'm going to look up the twirly wheels real quick. Okay. Yeah. What? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, not in your bedroom in the middle of the fucking night. Oh, not... no. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Look at those big old eyes. Yeah. No, thank you. I mean, they're cute, but not that cute. Not like see you in the middle of the night cute. Yeah, I don't I don't really have the whole cute til- children's TV thing. I, I don't know. Anyway, tell us a story, they'll say. Right. This is from Piper ASC. I often feel like someone is standing over me as I sleep. My legs get shaky and light, if that makes sense. I always have. Sometimes I can almost feel who it is. My grandma, uncle, mom. Other times I have this fear. One night I rolled over towards my husband as his back was towards me. My hair covered my left eye, but I opened my right eye. When I did, I saw my husband sitting there on the edge of the bed. I opened both eyes as I was going to ask him if he was okay. When I did, he was also lying on the bed. I was freaked out and immediately closed my eyes. I, even for a second, had the thought that he had passed away and that was his spirit sitting there until I heard him let out a sigh in his sleep. He often has nightmares that makes him cry out. It felt as though my heart fell to my stomach and my stomach to my feet. I'm not really sure what I've seen, but without a doubt, both entities were him. Just about a week later from the event last night, I woke up to the shaking light legs feeling. My heart fell to my stomach and my stomach to my feet. Then everything went silent, but a deafening silence, like I've never heard before, like I almost was all alone in a nothingness. Has anyone ever experienced any of this? Any thoughts? The whole thing with my husband has freaked me out. I've used sage in our home to cleanse it. He was recently diagnosed with diverticulosis, where he passed out waiting to be seen as he was losing blood. He has heart stints. He has had heart stints since 2016 and takes BP meds as well as a blood thinner. We're young in our mid-40s. Age is the scariest part of that story, I swear to God. (laughs) I hope your husband's okay. So yeah, doppelgangers, man, that's crazy. That's almost the exact same story as we've had before. Yeah. Like, same experience. Our friend woke up in her bed to her husband at the end of the bed. Yeah, just looking at her. Just looking at her, yeah. And then she turned around and her husband was lying beside her in the bed. Yeah. I don't know what's worse, like... I don't know if I would be more afraid to see myself or some like you know or you. Yeah. Like a different version of either one of us or just see a random person or like a shadow person. Mm. And I don't think I want to find out. No. <laughs> I think I'm okay. Yeah, waking up to no. No, thank you. I like my life as is. I'm content. Yeah. And again, hope your husband's all right, taking yep. his meds and all that. Definitely, there are other people out there that have had the same experience, and I'm pretty sure did exactly what you did. Mm. Cleanse the house. Yeah. And I guess re-energize themselves or whatever. Yeah. All right, next story. So this next one is from Reddit user Nudioho. All right. Nudioho? I'm not sure. I'll take it. This is a long story, but good. And as true as 33 years of time-faded memory can allow, I like to think I remember it vividly. Background first. When I was in second grade, my parents got divorced, and my mom moved my two brothers, my sister and I, I am the youngest, into a rental house. Looking back on it now that I'm 41, it was a terrible place. The floors were uneven, the house was sided in roofing shingles, the stairs shook as you walked up it, 
and the stove required an external propane tank. There was also a dirt floor cellar with an awesome little hiding place under the stairs. Definitely a hell house. The stereotypical house for haunting. And I would also just like to say, dirt floor cellars, nothing good can come of it. Mm. If we ever end up buying a house with a cellar, with a dirt floor, the first fucking thing I'm doing is cementing over it. Yeah. If there's dead sense. bodies under there, they can stay under there. Oh. I'm not looking for them. I'm just going to cement it over and pretend like nothing ever happened. I mean, if you're damned if you don't dig them up and you're damned if you do. I feel like. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. Anyway, for seven or eight-year-old me, though, it was awesome. It was also my first house that didn't have wheels. My newly single mom would go on dates every weekend and would leave me with my 15-year-old sister to babysit. As soon as my mom would leave, though, my sister would bolt to a party or boyfriend's house. Mm. My oldest brother was 20 and would only come home when the mood suited, and my other brother would always go to a friend's house a few blocks away. I was eight years old, alone, in what I now know was a crappy house. Another important point to note is that there was the master bedroom, bathroom, dining room and kitchen on the ground floor. Upstairs, there were three rooms. My sister's room, my room that I shared with the middle brother, and the other room with a padlocked door. Now it's story time. I had always heard funny noises in the house, but my mom always told me it was just an old house, and my siblings never really paid any attention. But, one of these wonderful Friday or Saturday nights, I was alone in the house and watching TV. I heard footsteps coming down the stairs and a child's giggle. I looked over at the stairs and there was nothing there. I hear more footsteps. Nothing there. It's just an old house. More footsteps coming from the kitchen and down the stairs into the cellar. The noise stopped for a while and I settled down and just watched TV. About 15 minutes later, I hear someone running up the stairs and into the doorway leading into the living room. And then they just stop. Eight-year-old me is freaking out. So is 41-year-old me remembering it. But that was it at first. Fast forward a few weeks of horrified and ignored me spending my Friday nights sitting by myself while no one in the family could possibly be bothered to stay home with me. Something always happened and I was always told it was just an old house or I was imagining it. And then my imagination spoke to me. Hi, do you want to come play with me? I'm bored. I didn't see anyone there. I just thought my sister left her radio on or something. That's so strange. Let's play. I look back towards the dining room and there's a little girl, about seven or eight herself, standing there. She looked vaguely like one of the kids that lived behind us, but before I could ask why she was in my house, she giggled and ran off and went straight upstairs. I ran after her. I bolted up the stairs and saw her at the top of the landing. As she ran off again, past my sister's door, past my door, around the top of the stairs, and into the third door, slamming it behind her. Remember what I said about the third door? It was padlocked shut. Yes, I remember about that third door. (laughs) (laughs) I ran downstairs, didn't stop to put on shoes, out the front door, and around the back of the house to the detached garage and hid there until someone came home. I guess the mood suited him, because my oldest brother came home. At first he was pissed at my mom and sister for leaving me home by myself, but finally he asked me what happened. He didn't believe my story at first. Who would? Until he looked up at the window to that third room. The light was on. We stayed in the garage for a while, until I was okay with going back inside. During which time, my sister got home and she got one hell of an (laughs) ass-chewing. An ass chewing. <laughs> an ass chewing. The three of us go inside and they leave me to sit in the living room while they investigate my story. I heard them messing around with the padlock and then a loud crash, some stuff moving around, and then, oh holy shit. That was all capitals. Click of a light switch, slamming door, running footsteps down the stairs, 
and then I see my brother and sister sprinting towards me as they pick me up and we all load up in my brother's car and drove to my grandparents' house two towns away. We told them the story and then I heard what they found in the room. It was a lot of furniture and stuff but my brother said he found a picture that looked just like the little girl I told him about and my sister found a rug that was stained with either red wine or blood. She didn't wait around to find out. They just grabbed me and booked it. I never had to step foot in that house again. Fast forward many years, about 20 years, I was working as a corrections officer in my home state and was helping with inmate files. I noticed the familiar address. After we moved out, apparently there was a police investigation. It was found that the family that owned the house suddenly just left for Arizona and rented out the house to subsidize income. The parents were arrested when the house was condemned and they had the parents were arrested when the house was condemned and they had to get their stuff out. But they never did find the little girl until in preparation for demolition they were digging in the cellar in my little hiding spot under the stairs. Oh dang. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said earlier. When <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't understand myself. Uh, my reactions. I feel like my reactions can come across very like monotone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Or like when I'm participating in some sort of event in which I am fully engrossed and completely enjoying myself. But to the untrained eye, I look very bored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can definitely um, agree with you there. <laughs> I'll like, come home and I'll be like, don't say, look, I just got, look at this. Look at this amazing thing. Look, I booked tickets to go here. And you'd be like, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, how nice. <laughs> and then I'll just be like, well, I'll just go fuck myself then. <laughs> Have you got another story for us? All right. It's called The Cheeky Ghost by Rosie Wren. I've posted before about my experiences at my dad's while growing up, but this is what happened at my mom's, mostly to her. After my parents split up when I was in year four, my mom moved into a house an eight-minute walk away from my dad's, which was good for us to walk between both houses without our parents. We had a routine of when we stayed at whose house, at whose houses, and it worked well. Anyway, my mom started mer mentioning weird things happening around the house, but she didn't really get freaked out. Her main events that she still remembers vividly to this day are when she was asleep in bed, and I guess this person is just like joking that she welcomes demons because it says she sleeps with one leg out of the covers and hanging off the bed. <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Although I, I do do that, to be fair. I do sleep with covers not on my feet because I run hot. She got woken up by being slapped on the foot. She said it wasn't painful, but she said, go back to bed, assuming it was me or my brothers. It wasn't until morning she realized we were all at her dad's for the night. Oh. And when she looked at her foot, there was a pink handprint. And her partner was at his house that night. Her second main event, she remembers, is while me and my brothers were at my dad's, she decided to do some tidying up while her partner laid in bed watching TV. And instead of in parentheses, not being lazy, he was on strong painkillers and needed to lay down. <laughs> we believe you. <laughs> to give a mental picture of the landing area, you walk up the stairs, you veer to the right, and there's my brother's bedroom with a plug socket next to it. Then there's my mom's bedroom door, and next to that, facing the bedroom door, was my room. So... My mom was, my mom had the Hoover plugged into the socket and is hoovering away when the Hoover just stops. She notices the switch has been turned off and the plug pulled out. She walks into her room to ask her partner what he was playing at, but he was fast asleep. Even if he wasn't there, there's no way he would turn off the Hoover, unplug it, get past my mom unnoticed and across to the bed in the space of 30 seconds. She mentioned a few little bits that I can't remember myself at the moment. The only thing I experienced is that I would refuse to sleep 
unless my cupboard door was closed, which could be just a usual childhood fear. Also, still to this day, after several new kettles, several places moved around the room, the kettle would turn itself on to boil. We have to make sure it has water in it so it doesn't break. These are ones you have to flick to turn on, and there's nothing around it to turn it on. I feel like if I was a ghost, that would be one of my main fucking tricks. It's to turn off the kettle? Turn it on oh. when there's no water in it. <laughs> oh, that's such an just asshole move. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would just be trying to make a cup of tea as a ghost. Mm. It's your job to keep the water in it. I'm a ghost. I can't fill it up with water. Yeah. I can fill it up with ectoplasm. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Going back to when we first moved into the house, we did move to school closer to my mom's house. Uh, when I first moved schools, there was still a buzz about a little girl who had been at the school before I arrived, who had ra- who had been ran over and sadly not survived. Jesus. From what I heard, she was moving to a different part of town and wasn't happy about it and stormed, stormed out of her new house or grandparents' house, whatever, and was hit. Yikes. Turns out the girl who died lived in the house we had just moved into. Maybe loved it so much that she just wanted to stay and play. My mom never felt threatened. She was probably just used to childish pranks with having me and my brothers around. Side story. The only personal experience I've had at my mom's house. So, we had a house rabbit called Quo. What an odd name. Sorry. Like, as <laughs> what in does that mean? Quo? Yeah, I guess... Is this Latin? I don't don't know. know. (laughs) He was amazing. He had such a big personality for a rabbit, and we adored him. He was a bit cheeky. If we snuck into our mom's room to sleep in her bed, he would come upstairs and burrow into the cover until we went back to our room. That's cute. That was his side of the bed, even though he never slept on it. (laughs) What the fuck? He's just territorial, I guess. I just fucking love lettuce and this side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and Latin. <laughs> <laughs> I love salads, all the dressing. Yeah. <laughs> he also used to run around the house having a ha- having a mad half hour. And when he got in front of the sofa where we were, he would just sat there. He would just sit there and he'd jump up, flick his tail and back legs, then carry on running around. <laughs> right on, quo. What the fuck? Having a rabbit must be very interesting. Yeah. They're cute. No, I, I've heard they like destroy your furniture though. Really? Yeah, like they chew. Oh. Chew oh, shit. Sadly, we found out he was very, he was very poorly, I guess, um, like health-wise. Yeah, like sickly. You name it, he had it. And we were advised to put him to sleep for his own benefit. It was absolutely heartbreaking. Me and my brothers were all still 10 years old or younger. We buried him at the bottom of the garden and made him a little gravestone. One day, I was looking out the window as something caught my eye. I saw Quo doing his weird flick dance around where his grave was. I blinked and he was gone. Never happened again. Whoa. Yeah. Just a little little rabbit doing a little dance. Yeah. Yeah. Just have him one last flick before he goes on his merry way. Yeah. That's mad. And also, I, I think, um, like, obviously, children ghosts are the most fucking terrifying thing. I can certainly one of the most terrifying types of ghosts I can think of. But I've also heard a couple of stories now where particularly a mom or maybe parents will kind of adopt the ghost of a child in mm. their house. No, I, I would never. I would adopt the ghost of a pet. Never something bipedal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it always seems to start off as like, you know, obviously natural spookiness shit or whatever. Yeah. But then as time goes by, they kind of just accept it and they're like, oh, it's just a, you know, another member of the family type thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, creeps. Once again, we are terribly sorry for the delay. Although it's only one day. We didn't do too bad, all things considered. Make sure to send us your stories. We're weeklycreep at gmail.com. We actually have weekly creep 
dot com right now. Although it's just set up to go to our link tree. So if you want, go on to weeklygreep.com. You can that'll have a list of anywhere you can find us. Send us your personal stories. I keep saying this as well because they don't have to be paranormal. If you just have like some fucking weird like oh I shook hands with Ted Bundy without realizing it type of story, send that to us. We want to hear it. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter. The Facebook group is actually picking up. What's the picking up speed? Yeah. Is gathering momentum. Ah, there it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we'll see you on Friday with a fresh new app. Yep. All right. We'll see you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Uncle Mom. Your foot. I thought your foot was a cat. <laughs> and then I was like, but I locked the cat out. I just fucking love lettuce and this side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and Latin. <laughs> <laughs> I love salads. Full the dressing. Yeah. <laughs>